Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rocket Magma, an affordable membrane style keyboard from Rocket, which focuses on RGB backlighting. And as you can see, the result of that is a particularly nice looking keyboard, which comes in at a very affordable £49 sterling and around $59 which is very reasonable for what you're getting. And I'm actually really surprised by that price because I didn't look at the price until I'd finished the review and was ready to talk to you about what it's like to use. Now, this is an unboxing video and a review. I've been using it for just under two weeks now and to talk to you about what the quality of this is like, the downsides of it that I can potentially see, some minor niggles and annoyances, go into the software a bit later on, but also just to talk about the highlights of it. Now, as you can see from the box and from the initial shots from this video, it is a really nice looking keyboard. For the amount of money you're paying, you're getting a very nice keyboard with a membrane style design, which means it's quieter than most of your standard mechanical keyboards. And yet it's designed for competitive gamers. And that's what they say with it anti-ghosting technology designed to register your key presses and deliver some good action. Now I've been using this for working throughout the day, gaming and for video editing, and I found it to be actually a very delightful device to use. It's been pretty nice. It does the job. It's comfortable on the fingertips and it looks the business too. There are some annoyances in terms of the design and I'll talk to you about those as we go through. But for the most part, it's actually a very nice keyboard, very affordable and well thought out. It comes with this wrist rest, which is detachable and it's a little bit intriguing as well, because when you get out of the box, it has these ridged lines on it. They look like they're going to be super uncomfortable. Well, when you start using them, it's actually not too bad. That has the Rocket logo in the bottom right hand corner, obviously. And the main thing that sort of shines is that back plate. So it's this semi transparent top plate to it that allows the RGB lighting to come through. But that obviously doesn't really shine until you turn it on. The Interesting thing about the wrist rest is it's also detachable, but you have to sort of bend it round in order to take it off, which is quite interesting. There's a little instruction in the box to tell you how to do that so you don't pull it off and break the little catches and then ruin the wrist rest. But as I said, it's actually surprisingly comfortable for what it is because it's not padded in any way. It's plastic. It's ridged. It looks like it's going to be super uncomfortable. When you start using it, it's all right. But what you will notice is that ridging effect. There's a lot of it and it runs onto the keyboard proper as well. And when I started using it, I immediately noticed an issue with that that I'll show you in a second. And there are some other things too, like the keycap design, for example, which I'll cover in a minute as well. Now that ridged effect looks really nice. And as I said, I thought initially it was going to be a bit rough in terms of the texture of it. It looks quite angry but it isn't that deep. And so you don't find that it's leaving marks on your wrists and it isn't necessarily comfortable. But one thing that does happen, I found quite quickly, is that dust and bits get picked up by the keyboard and they just sit on that. And this is a shot from the last couple of days when I've been using it for quite a while now. And you can see already it's picked up a lot of hairs and dust and things like that. Uh, yeah, I like my keyboard a lot and sometimes dust and stuff ends up there. I'm a filthy gamer, what can I tell you? But you can see it sits on there, but it's easy enough to get off. Just a brush and dust it down. No problems, that's gone and it's looking clean again, so it's not an issue. Also that raised keycap design and that back plate design means that it's pretty easy to keep clean. And because it's a membrane style keyboard, the housing means that it sits a little bit higher and I'll show you what I mean about that in a second. But that essentially means that this keyboard should actually be really easy to keep clean bar that wrist rest because you can just lift it up. You can use some compressed air, you can give it a bash, you can blow on it. You can really easily clean between the keycaps underneath the keypads and around that general area. Now I'm going to do a separate video with just the key sounds if you want to hear what it sounds like. But I will also be quiet for a second so you can hear me typing. And what I found is that this is, as you'd expect, a very nice, quiet keyboard that isn't picked up when you're streaming, for example. Now I've got a good mic set up, but I didn't find that I was hearing the key presses on the microphone when I was playing games with my friends. It's not obnoxiously loud, and that's the benefit of having a membrane style keyboard. It's really quiet, but it's also very comfortable and it's easy to use, nice key presses throughout the day, comfortable and responsive for that. And yet it's good enough for gaming as well. Obviously it doesn't have like a high end, super fast actuation that you'd get on a mechanical keyboard. It doesn't have that satisfying click that you'd get from them. 
but it still has a brilliant setup. Now it has anti-ghosting technology, 26 key rollover, which means you can press a mass of keys and it will still register those key presses. And one of the things I really like about Rockout's hardware, and I've talked about this in the past in previous Rockout reviews, is the Easy Shift technology, which is, I'll show you later on in this video, but it's essentially a bit of software where you can add a secondary key press to any of the keys in the keyboard. So this is a full size keyboard, but you can actually add secondary buttons into the layers as well. So that's going to be really interesting and potentially very useful. Now here you can see we're removing the key caps are easy enough to pull off and you'll see the raised plastic housing around them. These key caps have that long sort of neck on them, which means it sits inside that housing and the housing therefore is easier to keep clean than other mechanical keyboards. And that is a great thing indeed, and much easier to have a clean keyboard on your desk at all times. One of the things that I will point out, I'm going to take a little bit of time to show off, is I noticed that the lettering on the housing of the key switches isn't that fantastic. So the etching on it, from this angle, it actually looks really good. From a top-down view, it looks fantastic. The lighting shining through really well. You can see that transparent back plate is letting a lot of light through, and it looks great. It's got a five zone RGB lighting. It's not per key illumination by any means, but you have zones on there. And Rockat's AMO intelligent lighting is actually really nice. It's got some really nice glows on it. And this is under pretty heavy lighting, but it's still glowing really nicely. And it glows really nice throughout the day and into the night. But one thing that I did notice is the lettering isn't as good if you're sitting at your desk at the standard angle. So if you're sitting at your desk as you would be in a chair with the keyboard in front of you and you're looking down at it, noticed that the lettering is off and the top of it is quite dark and that's just the angle of how the light's shining through i think and i'm trying to show off in these video clips but i haven't actually managed to sort of replicate the view that i'm seeing so it's quite difficult to put across in video but essentially what it means is you have sort of light bottom half of the lettering and then top half's quite dark usually you see this effect on pbt double shot keycaps because they're a bit thicker but i think it's simply because of the way the rgb lighting's working on this keyboard because it's shining through that back plate, it isn't coming through individually through each keycap, and therefore it's not bright enough to shine through the lettering properly. You can adjust the brightness quite easily with the function key and those directional arrows you can see, so you can turn it up and down. And there's some more lighting up on the num lock and the caps lock up here, as indicated with a white indicator, which I'll be honest, I don't think is that nice. I think that kind of detracts from the look of it a bit when that's turned on. Uh, quite bright again that's hard to do it justice here but with the standard lighting on then you, you then have these sort of garish white lights lit up when that's turned on but it is nice to have an indicator when that's there another thing you'll see on the scroll lock is you have the game mode which obviously just gave us annoying things like the windows key when you're playing so what you can see for the most part is a very nice keyboard for the and I've really enjoyed using it and it's very nice looking and for the price is actually very good. I'm trying to pick holes in what is a pretty fantastic keyboard for the amount of money and they're tiny little annoyances that I found a bit frustrating like the keyboard lettering and another one that you might have spied already is the design of the keyboard. If you look here where it says the Rocket Magma, underneath the page down button and down by the bottom of control, you can see some black blobs on the keyboard. And I believe this is where the transparent housing is stuck to the back plate. Uh, I guess it's some sort of plastic attachments below them. What it results in is dark spots that you spy all across the keyboard where the RGB lighting isn't turned on properly. I can see it in several different places. It's really prominent underneath the enter key. You can see it here underneath page down, as I said. It's under the function key, control, and a few different spots around there. And if you look too hard, you'll find multiple zones where this sort of juts out and you have this black spot and I think that's a shame because it detracts from the overall look it would have been nice if they could have hidden it away more under the keycaps but again as I said this is an affordable keyboard so you know these are small problems in an otherwise fantastic bit of kit and I've, I've really enjoyed it I really like the RGB lighting on it I'm a big fan of Rockat's RGB AMO lighting really simple and what it does is it matches up with other devices here so you can see the rocket cone pro which i'll be reviewing shortly alongside that and with that amo lighting it washes across from the mouse to the keyboard and back and forth and there's quite a really nice view with that now i'm going to dive into the swarm software and show you what you can do in there
So here we are within Rockat Swarm Software, and from within the Swarm Software, you can control Rockat devices. So you can see the magma and the cone prone here, and you have a number of different settings. Now, the magma isn't incredibly feature rich, but it is possible to customize a number of different settings. This first one gives you access to basic settings like changing repeat delay, repeat rate, cursor, blinker rate, and things like that. I haven't changed any of those. I like it as the standard setup. You can also add a sound effect so you can get some sound feedback when you're pressing your keys in your headset. So for example, we can set a click sound. So when you're typing, you can hear that. Typewriter sound. Beam sound. Sci-fi sound. Those things are kind of gimmicky but they're there if you need them. Now, the most interesting things for me are under key assignment and key illumination. Now, I said earlier that this keyboard doesn't have per key RGB illumination. What it does have is five different zones powered by 10 discrete LEDs that give you that backlighting effect. And how it gives you the most lighting is through the transparent housing behind the keycaps. And that's how it all shines through. That is partly why you will see some dark patches on the lettering because there's not individual LEDs on each key. And so it doesn't shine through particularly well on some areas at certain angles. But that doesn't mean you don't get good lighting. You can see the AMO Intelligent Lighting System is the main default one that it's set to. And this is actually my favorite and always has been with Rockout products. There's some really good organic lighting that basically changes as you're using it and it changes through a, a nice wave of colors and it is one of the least obnoxious rgb lighting that i've seen you can also select and go through wave as a color you can change the speed up and down on that you can go to fully lit which i'll come back to in a second heartbeat where you can change to between different themes you'll see there are color themes whereas a gradient so you have red on one side for example orange on the other blue to white things like that. You can apply each of these to the keyboard and get those effects going across it. You have breathing and you also have fade effects. But my favorite is almost certainly the intelligent lighting. With the fully lit one, you can not only select the theme, but also customize each of the zones. So you could, for example, set a number of different colors to go across here until your heart's content. Let's just really make something hideous for now, just to show you. And there you have a variety of different colors. I've nearly created like the Italian flag or something then, haven't I? But what I will say about this is the software doesn't really show you what you're getting on the keyboard because what you get in the actual world is a bit more washed out than this. It's not quite as impressive as that. It's not as vivid. And so I do generally think that the intelligent lighting system is the best one to stick for. Zone lighting is never particularly good and wasn't expecting the earth from this one. It doesn't deliver. The key assignment is the next interesting point. So with this keyboard, you can reprogram most of the keys and you'll be able to see when you click on them what you can do with it, especially if you open up these sections here so you can see the variety of different options that are available. And you can choose from a number of different things. But I'm just going to show you, demonstrate you some things. So if you go and click on these keys, you'll see which ones you can change. And what you'll notice is if I click on these ones, so I click on P, for example, you'll notice that there's now a no entry sign on some of the key presses. So that means that I can't reprogram P. So you can't reprogram every key on the keyboard, but if we go to A, you'll see that's opened up again. You'll also see there is a game mode function down here on the bottom and an easy shift function. The easy shift function is one of the most interesting things about this keyboard and Rockat products in general, because that allows you to set a secondary action on that key. So what I'm going to do is drag this assign hotkey down and we're just going to say and add control and then control shift and V, which is paste without formatting, which is a random Windows shortcut, but I wanted, wanted to be able to demonstrate how you do that. So that will now happen. Normally it's A, but now when you press the easy shift button, which is on the caps lock key, 
That then opens up the secondary action for A, which in this case will then do a paste without formatting. But you could change that to something else. So for example, I could assign a hotkey and we could make that just R reload. And so with the caps lock set to easy shift plus, when you hold down the caps lock, you can switch between these two modes and you can customize it to do that. Now, if you click on each of the keys, you'll see where the keys have two actions where you have a standard action, you have an easy shift action. So you'll notice that some of them don't, for example, this end of the keyboard, if we click on K, you can't add a secondary action there. You only have one action, but you can remap the key. You can change it to be something else. So you can set it up for that way. And one of the things I didn't mention earlier in the video, but you can see here, if you look, is the function keys have media control keys built into them. So rewind, stop, play, pause, skip forward, mute, volume up and volume down. If you click on them, you can see it here and you can see what the standard action is and then what the secondary action is. You can also, if you want, if you're crazy, you could drag in that action and make it because what you normally have to do is press the function key and then press F5 in order to adjust the volume. But if we wanted to make it so that the volume down was just on F5 as default, now we can do that. We can apply that. And now I don't have to press the function key to change the volume anymore. It's just going to go up and down anyway. And you could do that with that key. Obviously then lose the F5 functionality on the keyboard. So maybe not ideal, but if you set up different profiles for different things, you could switch between them. You could set it so you can switch profiles. So you see you have an option to have a different profile. So you could set a button on the keyboard to change between profiles. Then you could set it so that you have media control easily. And if you need to get back to Windows or maybe even invert them so that you have F5 as the secondary function. So you need to press a button on your keyboard to get to those actions. The possibilities are fairly endless. Obviously you can't change a secondary action on some of these keys but you can remap a lot of them. So you can change your keyboard to do what you want it to. Doesn't seem to be a way to record a macro on this, which is unfortunate, but I suppose not surprising considering the price of it, but you can remap and change a lot of keys, which opens up a lot of possibilities and rounds off a very nice keyboard. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.